Okay. Number one. Fourteen people swim. Um, three people swim and take. Two people. Fourteen people swim, three people swim and skate, two people do neither. Swap the pens, put them cool like that. And fifteen people skate. Determine the probability. Skate only. What's the difference between one and two? Mm -hmm. You use total numbers in one and probabilities in number two. Yeah, I use total numbers in in one, and I use probabilities in number two. So probabilities, I can just write it once I get my answer. Number two, I can give the answer, right? Whereas in number one, I'm going to have to divide by the total to give me the probability. So both of them are from mutually exclusive, not mutually exclusive lesson. Because if there's overlap, they're not mutually exclusive. If they're separate, they're mutually exclusive. So we have four people swim, three people swim, and skate. So immediately it's not mutually exclusive because I have a swim and skate. Because if they were mutually exclusive, they'd be two separate bubbles, no overlap, right? They'd be disjoint. So we have swim, we have skate. We do the and first. There are three people who swim and skate. And then does it say skate only? No. No, it says 15 people skate. So on the test, people can subtract. So it's 15 people skate. This whole circle needs to have 15. This is going to be 12. And then there's four people who swim. There's 11 who swim only. You have to remember to subtract. And then there are two who do neither on the outside. How many is that total? 28. And we want the ones who skate only. So it's going to be probability of skate only. 
How many state only? 12 out of 28, which can reduce to 3 out of 7. Or we could do it as a decimal, what would it be? 3 divided by 7. 3 or 14? 3 Or if it said nearest percent, whole percent, we'd say 43%, right? So we have to watch on the test. If I say percent, you have to remember to multiply by 100. Nearest tenth is one decimal place because 10 has one zero. Hundredth is two decimal places because 100 has two zeros. The next one, I gave you probabilities. So what does your Venn diagram have to add up to? One. One. So I have passing English and passing math. So let's start in the middle. So I have 70, 0 0.7 English, 0 0.75 math, 0 0.1 neither, but I didn't give the and. But remember, if I give you each single and the neither and the total, you can find the and, correct? So I add up the singles, so I go 0 0.7. 0 0.75, 0 0.10, and I get 5, 5, 1, 1.55. What should the Venn diagram add up to? 1. So how much extra do I have? 0 0.55. So English only, I just want to figure it out, I don't have to, but I want to. English only is going to be 0 0.7 minus 0 0.55, which is 0 0.15. Math only is 0 0.75 minus 0 0.55, which is 0 0.20. And then this is 0 0.1 on the outside. Determine the probability students pass math and English. Is what? 0 0.55. Number three. A bag of marbles. has five blue, three purple, and six green. Lucy chooses two marbles. One after the other. Determine the probability. A, both purple. with replacement. B, purple, then green. Without replacement. Try those two up. So we have four lessons this could come from. This could come from odds. This could come from terms and cons with probability. This could come from mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive, which is or. Or this could come from independent, dependent, which is and. Which, unit, which lesson did it come from? Is this an odds question? Anything about odds in here? Nope. Is there anything about terms and cons in here? Are we like lining them in a row, picking a subcommittee, making a code? Nope. Is there an or in here? Or means I take out one marble, what's the probability it's blue or green? Am I picking out one marble here? No, how many events am I doing? Two, two events. So this is independent or dependent? The first one is what? Independent because I am replacing it. The second one is dependent because it says without replacement. So these are both purple. 
So I want the probability of purple and probability of purple. How many purple are there? Three out of? Three out of 14. And then does this go to 2 out of 14 or 2 out of 13? No, 3 out of 14, which gets me. The next one says purple, then green without replacement. So we want the probability of purple and the probability of green given that the person was purple. That's how you'd actually write it. That's why the formula looks like that. A straight up and down line just means probability green, given that I'm holding a purple in my hand. Okay? So probability of purple is 3 out of 14. Probability of green, 6 out of 13. Because even though we didn't go down one um, on the 6, we are going to go uh, decrease by 1 on the total number of marbles. So what do we get? Anyone type that in? 9 over 91? 9 yeah. OK. Independent. We have to have two events. Our examples for it would be with replacement. That's the biggest one. That's the most obvious. So we're taking out two cards, or we're taking out two marbles. We're spinning a spinner. We're tossing, uh, rolling a dice, or we're tossing a coin. Right? What other things are always replaced in between? We don't have a choice. To, we don't have to write with replacement because they always are replaced. What things do we do? For example, spinning a spinner. Do I ever take the piece off? No, I can't take the piece off and either replace it or not. I can't. I just spin it and then the next time I have the same amount of pieces, right? Yep. So a spinner is always independent. So I could ask a complete question. If you're on your phone, that's a problem. I could ask a question to tell me the difference between independent and dependent. Don't even know what you're doing. Are you doodling? You keep doodling in a circle. Um, so a spinner, what other things? Dice. Sorry, what did you say, Cody? Coin. Yeah. I kept saying roll a coin all the time, but we're going to toss a coin. Right? So anything where literally when you do the, the thing where it's like flipping a coin or rolling a dice, you don't actually take that side. You don't have a choice to take the side off, right? So it's replaced every single time. What's the easiest way to tell if it's dependent? Deck of cards or marbles or something like that. But what do I need to have written? Yeah, without replacement. So still two events happening. That's without replacement. Another thing we did for um, independent is we had two bags of marbles, right? If I have two bags of marbles and I'm taking one marble out of one bag and one marble out of another bag, they're, not, they're totally independent of each other, right? Another one could be I take out a card and then people are like, well, did you replace it or not? It doesn't matter because I'm going to take out a card and I'm going to spin a spinner. Are those events dependent on each other? No. If I take out a card and then I take out another card, then I have to answer... Am I replacing it or not? Because that makes a big difference. Okay? All right. Three. Standard deck of 52 cards. Fraction. Three B. Three B. Oh, should be three C actually. This isn't B. This is like an input. No, look up. A and B. Oh my goodness. I have to say four. <laughs> I didn't want to be wrong. 
<laughs> oh, like you? Standard, 52 deck card. Choose two cards. One after the other. Some deck cards have two Yeah, some deck cards are not standard 52 like, decks. Some of these cards are so over Wow. We don't want to leave you guessing. What card is deck card is that? Uh, like a whole bunch? Go fish. What would you think of a deck of cards you think of? Standard deck of go fish cards. No. Yeah. That would be standard. Standard deck of Canasta cards. What, what is that? What's Canasta is a game that everyone loves, and you don't, and that sucks to be you. Okay? No. You need to broaden your horizon. Okay. <laughs> when, when somebody says, Canasta is a deck of cards, what do you think of? I think of Go Fish. Old Maid. I have little children. Okay? Okay? That's where I, my mind goes. Uno. Skip out. I forget which question was, but the grammar in one question was. Yes, I'm glad you're actually back. I have to correct it. Yes. Okay. That's not even a question, though. Standard deck of fifty two cards. You can hold standard deck of Okay. Anyways, choose two cards, one after the other, without replacement. Alright. No, but if you think about it, like what's the difference between like coughing on the back of someone's head or like the front of someone's head and the It's very different. Right. Probability right. of so coughing on the first red and queen. Okay. Oh, I didn't do it wrong. No. no. This is uh, two cards being taken out. I'm going to go over the example and I can start with the same type of question, but it makes you do it differently. So we have to pick out one card and then another. So it's using and, so it's independent or dependent, right? Because we're going to have to multiply. Without replacement means we take off one card. So red would be 26 out of 52. And how many queens are there? Four out of? 51. This is the difference. Then if I give you this question, one card removed, probability, I'm not writing anything else, probability of it being red or queen. Two separate questions. This one, probability of red and queen is the and, so it's either independent or dependent. We said it was dependent because it was without replacement, correct? This one is only one card being removed. What's the probability of it being red or green? The or bumps us into mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. Queen, not. Red or queen? What did I say? Red or queen? It would be not mutually exclusive because. Oh my gosh, you answered it. How do you know? A red queen, which you said yesterday there's one, but there's two. I brought the exact same back example back. So. You can have a red queen. Yes, you can have two of them. Yes. Yes, you can. That's why I found mutually exclusive. Right. It's not mutually exclusive because there's overlap. This is true. So we have to look. To, on Thursday, we have to look for this. We have to look for the word and. When it says and, we have to decide if it's independent or dependent based on if we're replacing it or not. Okay? 
Or one card can happen, and I ask you for or. So it's red or queen, which means mutually exclusive or not. And if there's red queens, which there are, there's two, it's not mutually exclusive. So for this one, I would have to go probability of red or means plus probability of queen. And because it's not mutually exclusive, I have to subtract off the red and queen because I've added them twice. So red is 26 out of 52. Queens are 4 out of 52. And then subtract the two red queens off because I've counted them twice. And I get 28 out of 52. Or 7 out of 13. They look very similar. They're totally different questions. You have to be able to spot them. Okay? Now we're going to do rational division. You just need a piece of paper out. No. So for C, what can we take out of the top? We should put an equal sign. What can we take out of the top left? Numbers. A 2x squared. 2x cubed, take out a 2x squared we're left with. X and Minus. One. Two. Two. That's what I meant. Yep. The 2 and the x squared are in their own brackets. Over. The denominator, what can I do? 3x. Take out a 3x. X minus 3. X minus 3. X minus 3. And then the 3 and the x can go in their own brackets. Times x squared, I could just write out as x and an x. And then the bottom is a difference of squares. What is it? x plus 2x minus x plus 2x minus 2. <laughs> Don't promote that. Good job, Mark. That was you just got a hand clap for talking. What did he say? Did he say you go, girl? That what he said? You didn't hear? And we'll never know. Is that what he said? I don't know. All right. <laughs> so we have to state non permissible values, remembering that once we've taken out GCFs and differences squares, we can draw a whole bottom and whole top. So we get. 3 cannot equal 0, which I don't have to state. x cannot equal 0. x minus 3 cannot equal 0. x plus 2 cannot equal 0. x minus 2 cannot equal 0. So here I'm going to add 3. x cannot equal 3. Subtract 2. x cannot equal negative 2. Add 2, x cannot equal 2, and we can put them together as x cannot equal 0, 3, plus or minus 2. Now we have to look for matching twins on the top and on the bottom. So what matches? X minus 2. The x minus 2's cancel. This x squared, I could have written as an x and an x, right? So I can take an x and an x out. Could I have taken this x out with the one on the right? Yep. Can, because anything on the bottom that matched anything on the top can go. Anything else match? I don't think so. So I'm going to go 2, and then I'm going to go x times x times x, which is x cubed, over 3 times x minus 3, x plus 2. Nothing more cancels. X cannot equal 0, 3, plus or minus 2. For this one, what can I take out of the top? 2x. And I'm left with x minus 6. The 2 and the x are in their own brackets. And I have to have an equal sign. Well, I have 15 and x, and I can put them in their own brackets because they're multiplied. Top, 5 and an x, and then an x minus 6. So we have 15, it's not a problem. 
x cannot equal 0, x minus 6 cannot equal 0, add the 6, x cannot equal 6. Then I can draw a straight line across. And anything on the top matches anything on the bottom, I can cancel. X minus 6. The x minus 6 cancels. Cody, what else cancels? Uh, bottom x and top x. Okay, anything else? Yep, 15 divided by 5 is? 5 divided by 5 is? What? Yeah. yeah. So we have 2 times 1 times 1 times 1 times x. So we have what on the top? Cody. On the top? Yeah. Go with what he says. Uh huh. On the bottom? Yeah. Three. What do we have to put behind? What are they? Mm hmm. Put your phone away. Yeah, put your phone away. So, we're flipping over. And we're going to do. This one. So this reduces to a whole number. When I have two brackets side by side, what's that another way of saying? They're multiplying. They're multiplying. So go, multiply those. So I have 12x minus 24 over 3x squared minus 12 times. 6x plus 12 over 2. What can I take out of the left? A 12, and I'm left with x minus 2. The bottom I can take out a. I take a 3 out, I'm left with x squared minus 4. And what's that? x plus 2, x minus 2. So I can get 3. And then the x squared minus 4 turns into an x plus 2, x minus 2. Times top right, take out a 6, left with x plus 2, bottom, just a 2, and I can draw the whole thing, right? Then I get x plus 2 cannot equal 0, just for practice, we don't really have to do it for this question, just see where it's gone x cannot equal negative 2, x cannot equal 2. Then we cancel. We can cancel the x plus 2 with the x plus 2, the x minus 2 with the x minus 2. If it's overwhelming to attempt to do anything else after this point, multiply your numbers together. What's 12 times 6? And then what's 2 times 6? 6. And 72 divided by 6 is? So they fell in left to right. Okay, we're doing division. Now division is basically multiplication with one extra step and extra MPVs. That's it. So you're one step, every single time you're doing a division, you're one step away from multiplication. Yeah? Why did you do 2 times 6? 2 times 3 is 6. Oh, oh, yeah, you wrote that. You said 2 times 6. Uh, yeah, I probably did. <laughs> but yeah, 2 times 3. You could. Okay, so division is one step away from a multiplication. So we're going to go to this question here. We're going to go to A. So you're going to write division of rationals on your paper. And then the word simplify. That's it. Division of rationals, simplify. Is your title, and then simplify is all you need. And then we're going to put A. So we have x minus 3 over 2x minus 5 divided by x plus 1 over x. So we're just writing these out on a separate sheet of paper. 
x minus 3 over 2x minus 5 divided by x plus 1 over x. So, this is the catch. One step, and then we're at multiplication. All we do is you were taught to flip and kiss when you multiplied by fractions. What it means is you invert and multiply what you're dividing by. So we're going to invert the second one and multiply. So that's our extra step. So we're going to get x minus 3 in brackets over 2x minus 5 times x over x plus 1. So the very first thing I do when I have a division is I rewrite it as a multiplication only flipping the second one. Right, Cody? Give me mine. Write down. So the second part we are flipping and multiplying, but only the second one, right? So that's our one extra step. The catch was with the one extra NPV. This is the only NPV or the restrictions of non-permissible values where you're going to get more. Why? Because we have to state restrictions for any denominators, correct? Because denominators can't equal zero. That's our rule. So we have to state for this one and for this one because they're in the denominator, correct? But we also have to state for this one. Why? Because it's now in the denominator. So division is the only one that you actually state the right-hand numerator because it will be in the denominator in the next step. So it will be here, so we're going to have to state non-permissible value. So only for division do we have to do the backwards L, non-permissible values. So we're going to have to go 2x minus 5 cannot equal 0, x cannot equal 0, x plus 1 cannot equal 0. This one, people do wrong all the time. The 2x minus 5, they'll just tell me x can't equal 5, which is not true. It's x can't equal 5 over 2. So you actually have to do all the steps when it's not just a basic x plus something, x minus something. So we add our 5 over, and we get 2x cannot equal 5, and then we divide by 2. x cannot equal 5 halves. If you put 2.5, you're okay. And then here we subtract 1, x cannot equal negative 1. Now we can go and see if we can take out any GCFs or difference of squares. Top left, can we do anything? What about the bottom left, the denominator? What about the numerator on the right? Numerator on the left? No. So literally after we flip and multiply, we're just back to multiplication, right? GCF, difference of squares, top and the bottom, write them all over one. So if you can multiply, division is really easy. You just have to remember the extra MPVs. So can any of these cancel? Nope. So I'm just left with x minus 3 times x. Can they write these in different orders? Could they write x times x minus 3? Would that matter? Nope, it wouldn't matter. They can write it that way. And then 2x minus 5, x plus 1. x cannot equal 5 halves, 0, negative 1. Okay, so let's look at B. Yeah. Yeah. So if we look at B, what's the very first thing we should do? Flip and multiply, right? Get it right to multiplication right off the hop. So we're going to get equals x minus 5. 3x squared minus 9x times, flip them, 6x minus 18 over negative 5. Now I'm just at a multiplication, correct? When I do multiplication, my steps are, bless you, GCF and difference of squares, right? So can I do anything to the top left, the numerator on the left? Nope, stays the same. What about the denominator on the left? Nope. You can take out a 3 and an x. So 3x squared take out 3x is x. Negative 9x divided by 3x is minus 3. 
time, let's take a 6 out of the top, and I'm left with x minus 3, and then a negative 5 in the bottom. What's the catch? I have to state my MPVs, but because it was division, so this is the catch, though, that you have to watch yourself on. Because it was division, you have to do the top right as well, but people see multiplication and don't. So you have to remember that this was division. So I have to state non-permissible values for the 3, which doesn't get me anything. For the x cannot equal 0. For the x minus 3 cannot equal 0. For the 6, which doesn't get me anything, the x minus 3 I've already stated. The negative 5 doesn't get me anything. So I only have two non-permissible values. Once I see my non-permissible values, I draw it all together, right? What cancels off? The x minus 3s. Does this 5 down here cancel off this minus 5 up here? Nope. What about the x with the x on the x minus 5? Nope. So on the top, I have 6, x minus 5, and on the bottom, I have negative 15, x. You could have maybe spotted that the 6 and 3 could cancel, and if you could, that's fine. You could cancel them earlier. If you don't spot that, that's fine. You can cancel it now. What can I take out of the 6 and the negative 15? 3. So I'm left with a and a negative 5. So I'm going to get 2 bracket x minus 5 over negative 5x x cannot equal 0 and 3. So it's basically one step away from multiplication, right? But you have to remember the extra non-permissible value. And if there's a, a unit test question on non-permissible values, it's probably going to be on a division one, because that's where you make a mistake, because you forget that top right. Okay? You guys are doing C and D. Sorry, this one here, this A plus 3, if it's not over something, what's it over? 1. one. Anything can be written over a 1, right? For C, the first thing we're going to have to do is flip. So we're going to get 2W over 24W plus 4W squared times 9W cubed plus 54W squared over 6w squared minus 6w. Now on the top, the 2 and the w have to be separate. Check this. That's you. Put away your phone. Put away your phone. It's not a way. Then we can take out a 4W and we're left with 6 plus W. Times, you can take out a 9W squared. So instead of saying 9W squared, we could say 9WW, right? 9W squared out of 9W cubed is a W. 54W squared, take out 9W squared is a 6. Take out a 6 and a W, and I'm left with W minus 1. Now, we can write it all over 1 if we want to, but what do we have to remember to do first? MPVs of all the denominators plus the numerator of the second one. So we're going to have 4, can't give me an MPV. W can. W cannot equal 0. 6 plus W cannot equal 0. Up here I have 9. Not a problem. W have already done. W have already done. W plus 6 is the same as 6 plus W. 6 have already done. W have already done. W minus 1 is my other one. So this one's done. This one I can subtract 6. This one I have to add 1.
and I see what I can cancel. So a W for a W, a W for a W. 6 plus W is the same as W plus 6 because they are both positive, right? I told you the order doesn't matter. It's the sign that matters. So this is a positive 6 and a positive W, positive W and a positive 6, so they can go. W minus 1 on the bottom is going nowhere because there isn't a W minus 1 in the top anywhere. A single W stay in. You can take a 3 out of the 9 and the 6, but if you can't spot that, that's fine. Put them together, then deal with it. So 2 times 9 is 18, and then W. On the bottom, 4 times 6 is 24, and then W minus 1. Most people make less mistakes if they put them together first. I can take a 6 out of both. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So it's 3W over 4. W minus 1. W cannot equal 0, negative 6, and 1. Then we have D. So we're going to get A minus 6 over, let's close that window. So A minus 6 over 3A squared plus 9A times 1 over a plus 3 and then I can't do anything to the top left so I'm going to go a minus 6 the bottom left I can take out denominator I can take out a 3a and then I'm left with a plus 3 so then I have 1 over a plus 3 my non principal values are going to be a and a plus 3 the rest are just numbers. So a cannot equal negative 3 and 0. Now this is where people error. They think the a plus 3's can cancel off. Yeah. Yeah. Can the a plus 3's cancel? No, because they're both in the denominator. So it's going to be a minus 6 times 1 in the top, so just a minus 6. And in the bottom I have 3 and an a. And then instead of writing a plus 3 times a plus 3, I can write a plus 3 squared. A cannot equal 0 or negative 3. So make sure that you don't cancel to both and bottom. It was... First one was 3w. Oh, I'm quitting. I don't know what's going on. 3w over 4. W minus 1. Okay. These are your two questions for homework. <laughs>